Hello all, this is Dr. Kathleen Alsip and I'm going to provide a quick overview of the liver. The goals of this lecture are to provide you with the big picture ideas associated with the liver to better prepare you for your anatomy dissection experience, but also importantly in terms of preparing you for the clinical and other basic science lectures that are coming up in the gastrointestinal sequence. Now, as you probably know, the liver is considered the largest gland in the body, and it takes up a large portion of the abdomen. It is located predominantly in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen, but it also extends into the left upper quadrant. It has a very close association or relationship with the diaphragm, and you can't see the diaphragm here, but recall in terms of our dissection in the respiratory sequence. You had that diaphragm that you could see, and you could feel the liver just deep to the diaphragm, so very close relationship there. That's why that right dome of the diaphragm is more superiorly placed. Functionally, it performs a wide range of metabolic activities required for homeostasis, nutrition, immune defense, and particularly important in terms of removal and breakdown of toxic or potentially toxic materials in the blood. There are four gross anatomical lobes of the liver. The right lobe is the largest, it's considerably larger, and contributes to all surfaces of the liver. The left lobe is the second largest lobe, and if you were just looking into the abdomen, you would only see the right and the left lobe of the liver. Now, in this particular view, we're looking at the visceral or the inferior surface of the liver, so you can see the other two lobes associated. You will have both of the quadrate and the or the caudate, excuse me, and the quadrate lobes available in this view. The quadrate lobe is located anterior inferior and is in very close approximation to the gallbladder. So when I'm trying to understand which one is which, I try to find that gallbladder if it hasn't been removed, and then I know that I'm looking at the quadrate lobe. The caudate lobe is going to be located posterior inferior. These lobes are different than the eight functional divisions, which are based on the distribution of the portal venous branches in the parenchyma, and those particular segments are not going to be visible in an intact view of the liver, just these four gross anatomical lobes. There are considerable peritoneal attachments associated with the liver, and we're going to go over some of the big picture ones, and we're going to start with the falciform ligament. And you can see the falciform ligament right here in this image. This attaches the liver to the anterior abdominal wall. And when we're talking about within dissection, the anterior abdominal wall will be reflected in order for us to be able to see all of the abdominal viscera. So it will already be cut, and it will appear as a peritoneal flap between the right and the left lobes of the liver. In the inferior border of that falciform ligament, you'll have your round ligament or ligamentum teres hepatis, and this continues into a fissure on the inferior surface of the liver. This is the remnant of the umbilical vein that in fetal life opened into the portal vein. The diaphragmatic surface of the liver is covered with visceral peritoneum except posteriorly in what we refer to as the bare area of the liver, and this is where the liver is attached to the diaphragm by areolar tissue, not by peritoneum. The visceral peritoneum that covers the majority of the rest of the liver are what we refer to as coronary ligaments and triangular ligaments. One other area that I want to bring to your attention is what's referred to as ligamentum venosum, and this is the obliterated venous connection between the left portal vein and the left hepatic vein. And fetally, this is referred to as the ductus venosus. And you can see the ligamentum venosum sitting in the groove for the ligamentum venosum, so very aptly named, between the caudate and the left lobe. Lastly, in terms of peritoneal attachments, are the subdivisions of the lesser omentum. So we're not talking greater omentum, which is by far the more significant portion. We're talking about the lesser omentum. And recall, the lesser omentum is that double layer of peritoneum located between the lesser curvature of the stomach to that inferior surface of the liver. The hepatogastric ligament is located between the groove for the ligamentum venosum, so remember we just saw that on the inferior surface of the liver, and it will extend all the way to the lesser curvature of the stomach. 
The hepatoduodenal ligament is another division of the lesser omentum. This is going to be, be between the porta hepatis and the duodenum. And, and very importantly, it encloses the portal triad. And that portal triad includes the hepatic artery proper, which is a branch of the common hepatic artery, the hepatic portal vein, and the, the common bile duct. Sometimes you'll see the term common for, as well as bile duct. Sometimes you'll just see bile duct. And recall that this is a combination of the cystic and the he common hepatic ducts. So let's discuss a little more in terms of the porta hepatis. And this is this deep fissure on the inferior surface of the liver situated between the quadrate and the caudate lobe posteriorly. It's going to contain the portal veins. You'll have the left and right branches of the hepatic artery. And you will also have your right and left hepatic ducts. Additionally, and this doesn't get as much play, but it is very important in terms of what will be in, located in this area, you'll have the hepatic plexus of nerves and some lymph vessels in association with the porta hepatis. The main arterial supply for the liver is going to be from the hepatic artery proper, which is going to give off the right and left hepatic arteries. And you can see those right in this region here associated with the portal triad. It will branch right before it gets to the liver. There are two venous systems associated with the liver. You will have the portal and the hepatic or the portal or the systemic. You'll see it three different ways. The hepatic portal vein is formed by your superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein, and that will be just posterior to the neck of the pancreas, so a very important relationship there. And it will divide, or you'll have two tributaries referred to as the right and the left portal veins, and that's how that is getting into the liver. The parenchyma is going to be drained by the three main hepatic veins formed by the union of collecting veins. These are going to drain into the systemic system or into the inferior vena cava, just inferior to the diaphragm. The parenchyma of the liver is innervated by the hepatic plexus, which is the largest offshoot of the celiac plexus. This contains both sympathetic fibers and also, very importantly, parasympathetic fibers. One other thing I want to note here is that the capsule that's going to surround the external surface of the liver actually has innervation from the intercostal nerve. So you do have uh, some somatic nerves associated with this region as well. This concludes the overview of the liver. For additional information and images, please refer to the Blue Link website.